But fundamentally, we disagree with this bill. We think it's unworkable and breach of many human rights in Te Tiri Te Reo Waitangi. Julia Faiporti, advocate, community leader, and now a lead at the Human Rights Commission. The Commission regards the bill as unnecessary, unworkable, and in breach of numerous human rights and te tiriti obligations. It's one of the greatest gifts that Māori, um, Māori our ancestors could have given at the time. We invite people who are settlers in our land, we give them power and the right to govern themselves mm -hmm. on our whenua. At that time, our numbers of Māori population was about 80,000 compared to about 2,000 settlers at that time when Te Tiriti was signed. And so what it actually is, is the foundational constitution and rights document, is the promise of a relationship, mm -hmm. which is yet to be honoured, and this process doesn't honour it. It's recognising the rights of Māori um, to self-determination, to the responsibilities to care and protect for things that we identify as uh, taonga, which includes our rivers, our whenua, um, our children. Mm -hmm. um, recognising those rights do not take away rights from anyone else. Julia says it's impossible to deny the evidence that some systems and responses do not meet the needs of Māori. I mean, the Royal Commission on Abuse and Care has come out in terms of the numbers of Māori that have been abused in state care, that those responses do not work for Māori, cause more harm for Māori, uh, and that recognising Indigenous rights, the ability for Māori to make decisions for themselves, is actually a power. I'd say it's a superpower and a strength that if we move towards as a country, um, we would be in a much healthier position. How do you land the message with New Zealanders who really don't know what's in Te Tiriti and they're being told, yes, we need a national conversation, this is good? Absolutely, we do need a national conversation. We need one with the right information where people feel um, safe and comfortable to engage and that they are given the right uh, information. The bill is misleading in the information that it provides. Um, it incorrectly interprets uh, Te Tiriti or Waitangi and the way that it's been developed excludes the uh, Te Tiriti partner, Māori, from, mm. from that. So that is not the correct starting place. We want the bill to stop. When I've spoken with David Seymour, he has used the word apartheid to describe what's happening in New Zealand. Which is what I resent, you know, that apartheid was the evil oppression of white supremacy over people who weren't white. And so that is particular to what happened in South Africa. Tania Pofare, she's an Atlantic Fellow for Social Equity and a community organiser. Tania agrees that words matter evidence too. David Seymour frames himself, I guess, as a human rights activist. He's talking about equal rights. Now, what's wrong with that? No one um, would argue that people should be treated equally and fairly, right? And that's a, a, that's a different proposition to equity, because if we don't have equity in treating people as per what they need to become equals, then we can't realise that. I think the duplicitous nature of this bill is that it is offering um, a pretend justice. What inequality is actually being fixed? I would challenge anyone to come up with an example of how tetiriti is impacting their ability to live a good life, because quite frankly, it's, it's a nonsense. The Bill of Rights and existing common law ensures that everyone is treated equally under the law. There's nothing substantive in the bill. Its job is to undermine the actual tetiriti, to draw a line under all the wrongdoings that have happened over the last 180 years and say, look, well, let's just all move on. Some of us can't move on because we're so far behind the start line that we actually need those wrongs to be righted, those injustices to be dealt with head on. Dr. Elena Curtis is a public health physician, a champion of evidence-based interventions that she insists address both injustice and need head on. David Seymour says that policies like ethnicity-based surgical waitlists and university admission schemes are corrosive to an inclusive multi-ethnic society. They take the lens of ethnicity and look through it before any other. What's your response to that? It's really not reflecting the evidence base that we have as to why we need these interventions. 
there is not a level playing field for Māori in Aotearoa New Zealand. It's so frustrating because when I normally teach Māori health, I normally have to start off with we've got really high health need, we've got higher risk factors, we've got lower access, we've got lower quality, and we've got much, much poorer outcomes in terms of life expectancy, etc. Mm. And then you have to actually understand why you would need an intervention like a prioritised wait list, like an um, uh, admission scheme, a social justice entry scheme and something like medicine, because you're fixing that gap. But what, what this discourse does is it pretends there is no gap. And so it's really hard for everyday New Zealanders to understand why you should do something different for Māori, because if you can't see the gap, you don't understand what you're doing and why we're doing it. So really, it's about understanding where the gap is, what's caused the gap, and therefore what the solutions are for the gap. Cabinet issued a directive to create a colourblind public service that focuses solely on need. So, colourblind, that sounds good. No, it's not good because ethnicity is the strongest marker of need. So to not use it is not just inappropriate to the evidence base, it's inefficient, it's wasteful of our resources, and that's bad for all New Zealanders. That's bad for all of Aotearoa New Zealand. We use public health population-based interventions all the time because it's appropriate. We don't screen males and females for breast cancer even though men get breast cancer. You know, we're doing these decisions and working out who to target, who's at most risk, and where to put our scarce resources. So to suddenly put this blanket directive over the health sector to not use ethnicity even though it's the most independent and strongest in, uh, indicator for health need, that's just so, it's so unevidence based and it's so low, low level thinking. What's the impact on all New Zealanders if some of these um, special targeted strategies uh, are taken away? Basically, we're going to see a widening of inequities and that's going to result in um, packing out our hospitals, packing out our primary health care. This is going to have a flow-on effect for all of us. 